Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and this is a continuation of my Sussex border walk. And if you've been watching from the beginning, you'll know I've started in Worthing as my starting point at the pier, and I am making a clockwise um, walk around the county, which is going to take some time to do, I've suddenly realised. Now, I'm not doing this all in one walk and camping and then getting up and doing all of that. This is in stages, and I, as you saw, I'm going in my van. The reason for that is it's going to take months to do this, and so I'm just doing little pieces. The last place I was in was at Chidham, and I said in that video that I wanted to get over to Thorny Island, not Thorny Island, um, is it Thorny Island? Yeah, is it? Yes, Thorny Island, not Hailing Island, because <laughs> Hailing Island I think is in Hampshire, and then work my way northwards. Well, that's where I'm doing. I'm not at the southernmost tip of Thorny Island because that is a military base, but I'm thankful to one of my viewers, uh, Lee Freeston, who suggested the walk that I'm going to do today, which is really from midway along Thorny Island and up towards Emsworth, going as far as a little um, parish, I think, called Hermitage, which is just on the border between Sussex and Hampshire. <laughs> Well, it's another early morning. I like to do these early morning walks. And the first thing is I've got to go from where I've parked the car, the, sorry, the van, it's a van, still, still calling it a car. Uh, it's a new acquisition to me for those that don't know. And I'm making my way westwards to the west side of Thorny Island in which then I can walk up so that we should be able to look out at the harbour on the west side. I've, looked at the harbour on the east from Chidham. So we're just going along this little footpath to see what we can see and then walk up, as I say, towards Emsworth. And sticking, of course, to the footpaths at the moment. In the future, however, um, there is a Sussex border path. I'm not necessarily adhering to that because I want to try and stay as close to the border as possible. But if there are things that become more interesting that I want to dive over and have a look at and then get back onto the border. I might rather than just stay on the border footpath. Well, this is a beautiful sight. Behind me here, we have the harbour. I've just come out onto it. Um, it's absolutely wonderful. But the tide is out again. I keep picking these days in which the, uh, the tide is clearly out. And so the boat's just resting there on the, uh, on the ground, I suppose, on the bottom of, of the seashore. And you've got these, what look like um, cabins that people can come down and stay in. I don't think they're permanent dwellings but they look like cabins in which people stay, um, perhaps for holidays or to go sailing and then use as a base. 
um, and they've got the verandas so that in the evening we're in the morning so the sun is coming in from the east obviously but in the west the uh, the sun will be setting down behind me um, and you can imagine these people sitting there on their verandas enjoying the sunshine how wonderful that must be as the sun begins to dip down and you watch the ocean well, not the ocean the uh, the tidal the basin the harbor I will find my words it is early in the morning I thought I'd wade a little out, not literally wade as in get my feet wet, but well at least I hope not. I'm just walking out into the into the harbour basin area just to get a feel for what it's like if you were on a boat and to have a look back at the shoreline. It's absolutely lovely. This is one of the things I love about getting up early and coming out is that you can do this. There's nobody about. I haven't actually seen any dog walkers this morning. We've got modern boats here behind me. Of course, it's, it's lovely to imagine over time the different types of boats, the historic boats that would have been in here. And I don't know really, I don't know enough about how deep this was, whether you could have got tall ships in at any time or perhaps the, the rowing boats or smaller tugboats or um, schooners and things like that from uh, pre, pre back at, you know, a couple hundred years ago, whether they would have come in ashore here, what size vessel would have been in, and then perhaps bigger ships anchored further out. But I can imagine that th at one time this was bustling with all sorts of things going on, customs men, uh, stuff coming in, um, goods going in, goods going out, smugglers working along uh, in different parts. Okay, I'm back on the shoreline now <laughs> and um, walking up, uh, heading up towards Emsworth on the Hampshire border and Hermitage on the Sussex border and first it looks like I'm coming into a little marina. So let's have a look at that. This is a lovely, lovely looking marina here with um, a whole load of yachts and things all moored up, which presumably somehow come out of there into the main channel, I guess. There are a whole load of trailers here. And then of course the view with plenty of these seats to take in that view looking across. I'm not quite sure what we're looking on the other side. I guess that must be Hailing Island on the other side of this, this harbour. path which carries on up towards Emsworth is somewhat overgrown at the moment there's absolute wealth of wild flowers we've got a lot of mallow I don't know if it's tree mallow because it's actually quite tall here and uh, a whole load of other bits and bobs and what looks like cow parsley that's absolutely massive and um, we get glimpses of more of the 
uh, the marina down on my left and of course the wide view of the harbour which looks very quaint. So I've just come to the point, the end of this little pathway, you can't go any further because you're actually out in the, um, at the edge of the, the harbour and I've just realised that this by my side is where the boats, the yachts, come out into the harbour and in fact if I turn around there's a chap, you might just see him behind me, um, on a, a little motorboat going out presumably to one of his yachts now. So I now need to head back and get round onto another pathway round the other side of the yacht basin and um, head up towards Emsworth and um, Arm Armitage I had to think then <laughs> but beautiful lovely little spot to get to Well, I've walked, not that you can see me, um, as I'm in the dark here, that's better. I've walked around the yacht um, harbour and the marina and what have you, and I've now come to the other side of what's called the Slipper Mill. And in fact, there's a, there's a sign here about the Slipper, Slipper Mill and the pond, which is just in front of me, before I get up onto the main 259. Two, two it tells you that the slipper mill and the pond was built in 1780 and ceased to function um, in 1936. Mill store is now being converted into homes, which will explain why people have been looking at me as I've tried to film their houses. <laughs> um, but obviously there's a lot of interesting um, species that are here, a bit of a wildlife habitat. So behind me, is where I was and I was right over there on the far spit of land and the little motorboat that that I mentioned I don't know how much you saw of him he was coming through here into the channel and then we've got the mill pond in front of me here um, quite a large mill pond it has to be said and then there's a spit of land that walks up around the pond and goes up to the 259 so I'm going to walk up there and that'll be the end of my journey because I'm going to pick myself up on the other side um, in the next episode. But let's go up there and have a look. So I'm walking on this very narrow sort of bank, I suppose, and keep calling it a spit of land. It's a sort of bank, really, that divides the mill pond, which is on my right here to the east of me, which is very lovely. And I 
forget whether they're more hens with the white flash or coots. Um, there's a rhyme, isn't there? I forget what it is. Anyway, on the other side is, a, I guess, the river that must come into the channel here um, on my left, on the east side. And you've got all these houses and flats that will look down. And of course, there are some boats down there as well. It's absolutely a wonderful little um, stretch. And I've noticed that a few runners come down here um, and whiz round past this very large mill pond. It's very picturesque. I've uh, very much enjoyed this. reached the A259 which is this road here there's a, a oh no I think it's the one opposite me um, and actually I can see the sign for the Hampshire border so that just proves I'm on the border this is the other side of the mill pond so just to prove that we have reached the Hampshire border and that we will be heading north from now on in I will come up to the sign which is just in front of me here and so from the coastal routes we'll say goodbye as we in the next episode start to head northwards but here it is I've reached the Hampshire border <laughs> it's so thrilling um, so anyway that's it from a busy A259 uh, join me again on my next Sussex border walk as I start heading up northwards clockwise and make our way round but anyway from me Richard Vobes thanks so much for watching don't forget to follow like and subscribe and become a patron support what I do and I'll bring you more of these walks till next time bye bye